Greetings everyone, greetings. My name is Lily Ibiwari Irufakuma. To the glory of God, I'm an evangelist and I'm also a revelator. The Lord has been so good, he's been sharing, he's been showing his children and of course I'm among showing us a lot of things, you know, warning us, warning is going about and all that. So today I I want to be sharing my encounter so far with you. I want to speak because some people come to me and they ask me, oh, how do you encounter Jesus? How do you know that you're called? You know, different questions. Although I am not a, reg a regular YouTuber. I am not a regular YouTuber, okay? I'm not a regular YouTuber. I'm just a messenger of God. And whenever the Lord show me uh, anything, I use my Facebook page uh, handle very well. I have a lot of visions, revelations, dreams. The Lord has been showing me. I've been sharing with the world, with the body of Christ. So today, and okay, and again, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please don't look at the few numbers you can. You can make a difference by you know subscribing. Click the subscribe button and the notification button. So each time I upload a new video, you can be notified. But Remember, I am not a regular YouTuber, I'm not an entertainer, I'm not a content writer. I'm only, I only come up whenever the Lord shows me something I want to share with the body of Christ, with whoever cares to listen. But I made a promise in some of my previous videos that I'll be coming up to share my encounter so far with Jesus. So this is my first encounter I'm going to share today. It's going to be, I'm going to be making different videos, series, different series of my encounter so far, how, how I got to encounter Jesus, how I had an encounter with, 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 with the Holy Spirit and my conviction, how everything started my journey so far. So today, I am sharing with you my first encounter with Jesus. Um, that first encounter is, um, okay, growing up as a baby, as a, not a, I'm sorry, growing up I was, I was, a very you know strong headed we call it Nigeria we call it strong stubborn I was so stubborn I was so strong headed so many people most people don't like me most people don't like me you know I always have problems with people because I'm so stubborn and um, I when I got into secondary school like I met a school mother a lady approached me a young woman approached me and she said she wants to be my school mo mother and I said okay fine so she became my school mother I have lost contact with her name is Mildred, God bless her. So sometimes because of the way I was behaving, you know, back then my mom used to report me to her like my behavior that I'm so strong headed, I don't listen to people, I fight and all that. So um, my school mother, I noticed one thing about my school mom, Mildred, she was very calm. You know, she 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 was a born again. She was a born again. Back that was I'm using the word was because I've lost contact with her for a very long time. But okay, I'm going to use the word. She is a born again. And um, because I am not from a Christian background, I, I wasn't brought up in the way of the Lord at all. You know, growing up, my my my, my dad was an idol worshiper. You know, so um, this is the this is the 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 idea I had. So nobody took me to my parents never took me to church or or um, tell me about Jesus, I had no clue. But I knew about, oh, there's a name called Jesus and we can go to church to meet, to worship, you know. So, now my school mother was so gentle and I know she, she, she takes me to church, she tells me about Jesus. I cannot really remember very well, but I know she's this gentle, loving, caring. In fact, in as much as how stubborn I was, that people were, people hated me and all that. My school mother was so calm and she was always showing me love. She has this beautiful smile, always. She was so gentle. So, this is how I know that, oh, this one is a Christian, this is a body, and the way she dresses, you know, this is how I got to know about Jesus. So, one faithful day, growing up, I, I, I was a street girl, like, I always run out of home, living with friends, you know, here and there, I was never at home with my parents. So, one faithful day, in my teenage age, you know, I was, in my teenage days, I was out of home, and I was, like, sporting with some of my cousins, you know, distance cousins, you know, in a different city. So, in this, on that you know, that, where I was staying with my cousin, um, is like a major road where people pass, a lot of events take place. So there was a day I was just outside, so there's this young, beautiful, light-skinned lady, Nigerian lady. 
No, she was passing. This was this was long time ago. I couldn't remember how old I was, but I was I was in my teenage age, you know. So um, this lady was passing, and she walked past, and the, I was with other people. She came back and she told me, "Come." And I went to her. She said, um, "Jesus loves you," and she took me to church that day. She took me to one church. I think Redemption Ministry, something like that. I really forgot. Redemption is one of those churches, you know, way back. So she took me to that the church and um, something happened on that day. The pastor was preaching and I remember it was a very big church, you know, large congregation. On that fateful day she took me to church, I remember I fell under anointing. Like the man was just prophesying and I fell under anointing, you know. Um, so. I, from there, she took me to, um, now my parents don't know my whereabouts, so my, my, the, the lady that I met, she took me to where she was staying, then she was in the university, and she was in the University of Science and Technology, River State, Portaco, Nigeria, so that's where she was, so she took me to her hostel and showed me love, you know, she showed me a lot of love, so that's how, um, I know about Jesus. So after that incident I had with this lady that took me to church, I fell under anointing. I felt the urge to start going to church, you know. So I always, my, my belief, my, my, my mentality then was, if you want to see Jesus, you have to be in there. You know, you can only go to church to worship God. So that's how I started loving, you know. I just knew in my heart, in my spirit that I love Jesus. I love Jesus. So. Oftentimes, I, I do, uh, when I grew up, when I became in my 20s, before I gave back to my daughter, I would go to church and um, I just, there's this hunger, I cannot really explain, you know, how it was. I, I, there, was this, there was this hunger, you know, in me, testing for God, of which I cannot really explain. So I always go to church whenever I have problems, like the first place I run to, I'll go to church, the building, kneel down, pray, you know, like, just like that. So one fateful day, after I'd given fast forward to my, you know, my, my, hallelujah, sorry about that. So I fast forward to 2015. I'd already given back to my daughter. This is me, a young girl, a young, you know, um, girl giving gave back to a, a child out of wedlock, and uh, my baby's my baby's father denied the pregnancy. So I was battling alone. I had no. My mom is late then, so I was really in really deep problems. You know, how to feed my daughter was a problem. But at this time, I was living a very wayward life. You know, I was living a very wayward life. All I was thinking that time is to go to club, sleep with, you know, men and feed my daughter and all that. That was the mentality I had then. Okay, I'm going to be, the mentality I had, I'm going to get married to some white rich man. Someday, this was the mentality I had then, so I can take care of my daughter and all that. So things were not just working out. I was facing disappointment, rejection here and there, and nothing I ever did work out. If I go to look for a job, or what people, uh, uh, maybe the supervisor, someone that will interview or mail, they want to sleep with you, or have sex with you, and you know, life became so miserable. So now I was looking for solutions. So I've been to churches where not really they call them white garment churches. You know where they told me, oh, I had a spiritual problem. I had a marine or spirit husband or something like that. So I was living with this mentality, with this belief. Oh, I have a spirit husband. I need problem. I need solution to this problem like that. So I've been going to different churches like that. I have gone for deliverance upon deliverance upon deliverance. I've been going for deliverance and. Nothing. You know, sometimes it will relieve me a bit. Things will become better. Then I'll come back to square one. Sometimes worse than the, the beginning. And um, on one fateful day, I met. I went to rent an apartment in some places in Lagos. This was in 2015. So when I got the apartment in that place, there's, a, there's an elderly man. We call him Baba. I'm not going to call. Uh, the other side, but what we call him Baba. So Baba is an elderly man, he's a real he's into real estate, you know, he sells land for people and all that. So it became like I became so close to him. 
um, because he is a nice, nice old man. So one day I explained everything to him and I said, Baba, this is my problem. I have you know, spiritual problem. Things are not working out. I'm facing rejection. Anything I do, nothing is working out. So one day he told me, he said, okay, I'm going to take you to a spiritualist. This white garment spiritual that they're going to make some rituals, some spiritual work for you, maybe you know. So, but we need money. So I said, how much? He said, so so amount. So I gave him the money, and that night I went to sleep. That he was supposed to take me to this spiritualist to do some spiritual, you know, work rituals for me, so that I will things will go well for me. So that night um, I slept. I gave him the money like today, like tomorrow we're, we're supposed to go to the place. So I slept. That night, that very day, I gave him the money. That night, I slept and I had a dream. When I had a dream, I saw myself walking a very long road. I've been walking in this road for such a long time. Now this road looks looks it looks lonely. I didn't really see people. I cannot remember. This was in 2015, so I was walking on this road, and at, at some point I became very tired. So I said, "Oh, this road I'm walking there is no now." In this dream, I don't even know my destination. I don't even know where I was going to, but I knew that I was going somewhere. But it was a very long journey, and I started walking. And when I got to a particular place, I became tired, so I stopped and I turned. And I said, I'm going to go back. I cannot continue. So uh, when I got to a particular place in this road, I saw this road was so solid, strong. You know, uh, it's like, it's looking like a flyover, something like that. So I stopped. And I saw, when I, the, the area where I stopped was, I saw, a, I saw like the road I've been walking towards the end of that road. I, 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 have, I still have to continue. That particular place became like the edge. The road became narrow because the more I walk on the road, the road, the road become narrow, became narrower. So when I got to that particular point, the road became so narrow that it became like the edge of a razor blade. It became like a, the edge of a razor blade. So I'm like, wow, how can I pass here? I won't be able. I there's no way I can pass this place. So um, it's like a closed road, but there's there's like a road, but there's no how. Even with anybody's imagination, you cannot pass that place. So before I knew it, I saw three men just pass. I don't know how they did it. They just passed. Like I said, they disappeared. Something like they just walked past into the place. So I, I didn't even bother. I didn't even, you know, pay attention to them. So as I was about to turn back, I already turned. And I heard a voice across the road. Now, it's so mysterious. I'm in a very tiny place. When I look for it, I see a distance. And I saw a man standing afar off. A little bit you know far off from me he was standing there and he said why are you turning back his words were like why are you turning back now you are almost there why are you turning back and I said I cannot even go in because the road is so narrow that it's like the edge of, I can there's no way I can pass there it's not possible and the Lord said did you uh, I'm sorry and the man that was speaking with me said did you see those three men that just passed I said yes I saw those three people that just passed he said I made a way for them that's what he said he said I made a way for them now this man that was speaking to me I cannot really explain how he looks like but he was so gentle he was so calm he was so 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 humble so patient okay in the dream in this dream it was I see the man has been there waiting for me and he was so patient this person was so patient, so immediately said, those three guys, those three people, I made a way for them. And I said, Lord Jesus, is you. So I just said, he's you. And I think I went on my knees and I said, Lord Jesus, is you. He's you. I said, okay, but Lord Jesus. So at that point in time, immediately I said, Lord Jesus, is you. And I went on my knees. I saw that, I now noticed that all this while I've been having one beautiful a garment, like a, a wedding dress. I had a wedding dress, a bulky a beautiful wedding dress that was is, is, is mine and I'm holding it and I didn't even know all this while that I'm holding this garment or all this, this white um, wedding dress you know white and some I don't know if that's some goldish something but this dress is beautiful like you know a queen kind of you know a white all these um what do you call it Cinderella kind of let me put it that way beautiful dress and a, a beautiful wedding dress and he said i said my but see so when i took i didn't even know all this why so when i i said look but see lord jesus my garment is torn so when i look i saw that the the, the the down part of my garment was like it was torn like loose like it was torn it was torn 
um, and I said it's torn so I cannot go in because the garment is torn and he said the Lord, Lord Jesus that said look over so where I was standing I looked down it's like you know I, I was on top of a bridge you know a bridge a foot bridge then I if you look down you see people then when I look down he said look down I have kept a tailor I have kept a tailor to amend it for you and I said thank you so when I looked down I saw different tailors there he said I have kept a tailor that will amend your garment your your wedding dress for you so that if I amend it I could be able to go in and I, I immediately said that I woke up this was my first encounter with King Jesus Christ of Nazareth he appeared to me now I just knew when I woke up that I am not supposed to go to anybody for for help I am not supposed to go to any spiritualist to help me out that I am already in a race every race and another thing I understand was that every child of God every Christian anyone that has believed Jesus genuinely has accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior have a beautiful wedding dress I'm talking to the females I cannot speak for the men so this is my first encounter with Jesus Christ but you know people say once say forever say my brothers my sisters if you come across this video I want to let you know that you have a garment if you have given your life to Jesus Christ but you must, the most important thing you having a garment doesn't guarantee you to enter into the kingdom of heaven this vision this dream makes it very clear that you can be a Christian you can be a believer but you if you are not born again if you are not obedient to Jesus Christ if you're not obeying God's commandment you can not enter into the kingdom of heaven because you can imagine that dream my garment was torn so if your garment is torn or stained stained mean sin you know if you're if you're serving God and you're worshiping other God you're, you're putting your trust in another person thinking that you know you can find help from another place the only place you can find help the only one that can save you. his name is King Jesus Christ of Nazareth the one that was dead and is alive and is coming back soon the Alpha and the Omega the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the ending the son of the living God the ancient of days he is the only way so I am using this video to encourage you and to talk to you to tell you that keep your garment clean keep your garment clean keep your garment clean and don't tear your garment how would you tear your garment if you're sinning if you're in sin the only way that will, the only thing that will make your garment pure and clean and well ironed and no spot no ripping if your garment is not ripped if you, if you don't want your garment to be ripped sorry you have you really have to be in Jesus Christ and stand on him and him alone believe in him alone